If you're working with spatial audio, you usually need a very sophisticated speaker setup. If you're working with Dolby Atmos, for example, you need at least 12 speakers. If you're working with Ambisonics, you might even need more than that. However, for most of us, this isn't really an option. What we would like to do instead is we would like to work with headphones. Now, unfortunately, headphones aren't particularly immersive, even though some companies try to make you believe that they can turn them into something that is immersive, but that's not really the case. But one thing that we can do is we can add a head tracking device to our headphones, and this head tracking device would communicate the position of the headphones and therefore the position of my head to the audio engine so that we will always get the correct audio impression and we would have a fully immersive experience. Now, over the last couple of months, I did a lot of videos on all kinds of head trackers, but I noticed that I never did a comparison video and that's what I want to do today. So what I've decided to do is take the five head trackers that I've worked with so far and rank them according to least impressive to most impressive. But before I do that, first of all, Hello everybody, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. If any of those topics interest you, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to press the like button because of YouTube algorithms. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or feel free to join my Discord community. It's free, there are a lot of interesting people there and you can all ask all kinds of questions there. Link is in the description below. Now, with that being said, let's get started ranking some head tracking devices. At number five, I have the Vidmotion head tracking device. The Vidmotion head tracking device is a device that's primarily used in do-it-yourself projects. And you can get that from Amazon for a very low price. Uh, there are actually a couple of different versions. It comes in this uh, nice little box. And uh, in connection with audio, really the uh, main use of this head tracker is in connection with the Audio E's 360 pan suit. The Audio East 360 pan suit is primarily used for the production of 360 video and uh, it essentially allows you to bring in 360 video into a digital audio workstation environment. Now the nice thing about it is that it has native integration of head tracking and this is done through the Vidmotion head tracking device and you can actually purchase the head tracker from the Audio East website directly. Now I've not yet done a video on the 360 pan suit and the reason for that is that when it was originally released, it was only released for Pro Tools. And uh, I did some tests back then with the head tracker here and I did not find it particularly practical. Uh, the head tracker would drift a lot uh, and uh, I could never really calibrate it. I'm not quite sure why. And because it was only working with Pro Tools anyway, I didn't really pay too much attention. However, over the last couple of years, they have continued to develop this software and it's now available for all digital audio workstations. So you could technically use that in Reaper or in Nuendo. And I might actually do a video in the future. So if you guys are interested in a video about that, let me know. However, for me, this comes in at number five. And the main reason for that is, uh, even though it's very inexpensive and it would actually be a nice head tracker that also works with Bluetooth, by the way, uh, but it just was drifting too much. It was not really useful. It, I couldn't get any useful information out of that. But I'm happy to kind of give it another try if there's any interest in this community. This brings me to number four. And uh, number four is the Oculus Quest, or as we have to say now, the Meta Quest 2. And I might actually do a video about Meta, that Meta thing uh, in the future because it is somewhat annoying, the fact that Facebook doesn't really know what the Metaverse is. But that's a completely different story. Anyway, so the, the Oculus Quest. Now, the Oculus Quest can be very well integrated into Steinberg Noendo, and it actually works really, really well. I did a video uh, about that, and I'm going to post a link in the description below. It's extremely stable, as you would expect, because it is uh, necessary for this device to essentially give you a correct visual impression, and uh, if it would drift, essentially would get immediately motion sick. So this is probably the most stable device that you can get. The reason it comes in at number four for me is simply because uh, essentially um, you're not seeing anything. So uh, you can't really work with a digital audio workstation in the way you're used to work with it. Um, you need to somehow bring that digital audio workstation into the visuals of the Oculus or Meta Quest. And um, while this is not particularly difficult to do, it is a little bit of a burden and it's bothersome and it's not really that fun to, to work with. Uh, but once again, you know, kind of, it's a really good way to, uh, to do that. And uh, if you're willing to uh, essentially get, go that extra mile of um, essentially always completely redefining how you work with a digital audio workstation, that's certainly a good way to go. At number three, I have the Waves and X Tracker. And the Waves and X Tracker, here it is, 
Let's just make sure uh, here it is. Was actually originally a Kickstarter project. Now, I was one of the original Kickstarter supporters. Now, the Wiffs and X tracker works with the Wiffs and X system. And the Wiffs and X system is a system that works actually extremely well. So it's a complete turnkey solution. So it's very easy to use. So if you are just starting out and you want to have a an easy way to get into that, that field of spatial audio, that is probably the perfect way to go. However, one of the main issues is that uh, the Wiffs and X system is only limited to first order ambisonics. And in this day and age, that is simply not enough. Now there's one way you can go above first order ambisonics and that that is through the use of the NX OSC bridge. The NX OSC bridge is a piece of software that has been developed by a Japanese developer. And what this allows you to do is turn the sensor data that comes out of the Waves and X tracker and turn it into OSC messages, open sound control messages, which you can then read in your digital audio workstation and process them in any way, shape or form you like. Now, this, will, this would allow you to use the Waves and X tracker with, uh, with any spatial audio system, really. So you can use it with higher order ambisonics or digital at or Adobe Atmos. Uh, however, the main problem here is that the uh, NX OSC software only exists for Mac systems. So at the moment, at least, the only way to do that is on a Mac. Uh, if you are on Windows, you're a little bit out of luck. So I do recommend this as something that uh, is very easy to use. So for anybody who is just starting out, uh, this is a good option. Uh, however, if you want to do some serious work, it's actually only really useful on a Mac because on Windows, once again, you're limited to the Waves and X system and that, at the moment at least, is limited to first order ambisonics. This brings you to number two and in number two I have the RG Lab Head Tracker. Here we are. Uh, now I did a number of videos on the Archilab head tracker and I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Some of you have reached out to me telling me that it's difficult to get that little head tracker. Now the reason for that is that developer Remy is really just, uh, you know, kind of really just doing this for fun. So you need to wait. Uh, you need to kind of work with his schedule. Uh, however, um, this is actually just a do-it-yourself head tracker. So you can build that yourself. And uh, the way this is done is by just kind of taking a little uh, Arduino board uh, and and connecting that to, let me just get that here, a, here we are, a, a sensor. So Arduino board and sensor. And what you really need to do is, the only thing you need to do is just kind of solder them together. There are three connections you need to make and that's really much, really everything there is to it. And if you want to have this little enclosure, you can uh, essentially download the, 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 the blueprint for this enclosure and just kind of have a 3D printing service have to print out for you and that's very inexpensive. So if you want to get one, uh, uh, either ask Remy and uh, be patient with him uh, or just build it yourself. If you want to build it yourself, just go to the Envisonics Head Tracker GitHub page. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. And there you will find all the information that you need in order to, to build it yourself, including the list of components that you need to get and what uh, exactly you need to solder together. So if you're just a little bit handy and are not scared of a soldering iron, this is not going to be a big deal. And if you additionally want to uh, have this little printed enclosure, you can also 3D print that yourself. Just download the files and either kind of send it to your own 3D printer or if you don't have a 3D printer, use a 3D printing service. Now the way this head tracker communicates with the digital audio workstation is with the help of the Envisonics OSC bridge. This is a completely free piece of software. You can download the software from the Envisonic GitHub page. Uh, all you really need to do is download it and install it and you're ready to go. And what the software will do is it will once again, turn the uh, information that is coming out of the tracking device into OSC messages that you can then process in your digital audio workstation. Now, the nice thing about this particular piece of software is that it can run multiple instances simultaneously. And that means that you could technically connect multiple head trackers to the system at the same time. Uh, and I see a couple of very, very creative applications for that. So you can also, also use that, for example, not only for tracking your head, but also, for example, for tracking your hand movements or other parts of your body. So uh, this is actually a really nice um, do-it-yourself tracker that has a lot of different things you can do with it. So there, there's some, some creative potential there. 
Now, the reason the Archilab head tracker comes only in at second place for me is that it is a little drifty. So it does drift once in a while. It's not, it's not terrible. Um, clearly not as terrible as the Bitmotion head tracker, at least not the, the version that I had. Uh, but it does drift once in a while. So just be aware of that. It's a do-it-yourself head tracker. It works very well. It's very inexpensive, but it does drift a bit. And on top of everything, you also need to connect it via cable. That's actually the first one that connects through a cable, which for me was an advantage, but for you, depending on how you like to use this head trackers might actually yeah, be a disadvantage. And this brings me to my favorite head tracker, at least at the moment, and that is the uh, Supperware head tracker. And I actually did quite a few videos over the last couple of weeks about this device. And there are a couple of things that are really, really nice about it. First of all, the way it is constructed allows you to fully integrate it into your headset. So if you have a headset that has uh, a uh, headband that essentially can be replaced, you can simply kind of put it in there and it completely disappears into the headband, which is really nice. The second thing is that in contrast to many other head trackers, this is actually really stable. So I didn't have a lot of drifting going on. It is a head tracking device that you need to connect via USB. Uh, but I once again, for me, this is actually an advantage and not a disadvantage. For you, this might be different, but uh, but it is it is kind of it ticks all the boxes. It is not particularly expensive. It uh, is very stable. Uh, it works really really well, and uh, fits very well onto my headphones. And I don't look like a fool when I have that on my headband. The Subway Head Tracker works with the Bridgehead OSC Bridge, and this is a little piece of software that turns, once again, the information that comes out of the tracker into OSC messages, which you can then process in your digital audio workstation. And uh, the software itself is completely free, so you can download that from the Subway website, and it works quite well. Um, and has this nice feature that it actually disappears into your task list. So it's always there and uh, that is actually very, very convenient. So overall, I currently like the Subway head tracker the best. However, I have to be perfectly honest that it was really difficult to decide between the RG Lab and the Subway. It's really just the fact that the Subway is uh, a little bit more stable and uh, kind of a little bit more stealthy that made me choose the Subway head tracker over the RG Lab head tracker, but you can't go wrong with either one of them. They're, 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 they're actually quite good. Now, this is everything I wanted to say today. Once again, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below or join my Discord community. Uh, I'm very happy to answer any questions that you have there and I try to answer them as fast as I can. That's not always possible, but at least I try. Uh, and with that being said, see you at the next video.